All right, and uh, welcome to this little episode. It's just going to be really quick, and it's all about Roll20. Um, someone had asked how I used it. Like, I'm not the master at Roll20. I'm not the master of anything. And uh, all I know is little bits and pieces, enough to get me in trouble. But, um, for me, Roll20 only works with Fox, Firefox. Um, but I know it works with Chrome. I just I won't use Chrome. I'm just I don't know. I don't like Chrome. But anyway, so once you log into Roll20, and um, you can do a lot a lot of stuff. So I had a campaign that um, someone else was running, and he had the sprites um, for the mechs, and we role played and got in and out of our mechs and did a little. Um, at a time of war type of role playing where we were going into villages and stuff like that and then we still got our mechs and he had figured that he was doing the actual tabletop version when it came to figuring out how to fire and the fire solutions instead of having Mega Mech do it because it was so uh, it was more role playing but here I, I try to do as little as possible to set up my maps. So this one I had uh, taken out of one of my electronic uh, Battletech books. And this is uh, Vega. And so I imported it and then I put the hexes and set it up so that I didn't have to build a map. And uh, but you can do whatever you want. So let's open a new page, create a page. All right, now I like to set, you can set the settings up however you want. I found that if I want to have a big map, I usually have 400 by 400. Each unit is 100 miles. Uh, you can do kil kilometers. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm not going to put a grid on here. Now some maps like that, um, you know, let me just, this map here, the Vega map, I placed the grid on there. Okay. So I had, I'm pretty sure I did. I can go in here. Yeah, see, I had the grid, grid enabled and so like that. And that, this was 200 miles, four, four by, uh, 400 by 400. You just have to mess with it and see how you like it. Because when I did 100 by 100, these these squares were smaller, and it was going to take forever and a day to get across the world. All right, so I'm back here. Make sure 400 by 100. All right. So some things that I do to build a map. I use fractal fractal map mapper sometimes. Uh, I don't know if y'all know any of this, but you know, just you can build whatever you want. If, especially if you don't have any data on the planet, now I can just build whatever I want and try to uh, make it as realistic as possible. All right, because you can have the map and you can add mountains and whatnot. Um, Here's a picture, and then you can save it as a JPEG. So this is a picture. I, you know, I didn't have any, any information about Helm, so you know this is I sand. I I had put the uh, ancient capital there from where the nuke was at from the storylines, and then the forest and stuff with rivers, and that's the story. Um, line that I did for the Chappies Halloween Seekers. That's the map that I used for that. Okay, so back to this. You can use whatever you want as long as it's JPEG or you know, bit. Now all you do is you take the picture, 
and you drag it in. Now I tried using uh, Internet Explorer and this wouldn't work. This feature wouldn't work. So, but there you have it. Now you have a map. Now it's a square map, meaning square hexes. So if you don't like that, you just have to deal with it, I guess, because that's the way that that particular map that I set up is. And then you can make this bigger. Just as soon as I get over there. Like I said, I'm not the expert in this. See, as you make it bigger, then you get the most of the, the rest of the map in there that you had built. Wherever, whatever you had built. I don't know where this came from. I think I pulled this off the internet. You know, I don't, I'm not here to make money. And I don't know, I know there's copyright rules and stuff like that, but I tend to like to pull stuff off the internet to use for my games just because it's there. Oops. So that's how I do that one. Now, I just pulled, let's start another page. And I just pulled this before I started this video. I pulled this off the, off the internet. And it's the world of Ashgard. Alright, now I didn't set up the settings for 400 by 400. But that's okay. You can hex it, make it darker, make these bigger so it shows better. And zoom in. So, these maps are great. Right, so, if you have this map here, and you want to input the symbols that I have, you can just add, add the symbols right on top of the others. And I'm going to pull those symbols up here. Soon as I get them, so these are my old symbols, but it'll still work. Drop and move. I can make them um, as big and as small as I want. You right click on them so you can add the names and the bars and stuff like that, wherever you want. And that's basically it. Um, over here on one on roll twenty, you can. They also have an art library. So, and you can actually put Mega Mech. Well, it used to work. Hey, there's pictures of maps in here. There used to be pictures of sprites 
Guess it looks like it's showing up now. The thing you can do though is go into your Battletech game if you want to put just straight up mechs in there. And go into your data. And click and drag. And there you have a mech. So they used to have... There we go. Let's type in Mega Mech, not Battletech. So the, see, they have some mechs in here. We can put them in here. All right. Then you can also, if you want to do a section by section. Let's um, let's go in here. Grid e hex. Okay, wrong grid. There we go. You can actually, you know. Slowly make your own map. You can also have one that so you have several maps and you can build a map yourself if you want within roll twenty if you're going to do and this is what the other guy did. You know, if you're gonna have the battles and stuff. So what you want to do is change this to maps and background right move the sand over make it big enough to fit that and then when you go and put your token on there you go objects and tokens You can put one of those dudes that they have, or you can bring one of your stuff over and drawings. Cool. And then you can always move them, whatever, one, two, there's two movements, and then you can figure out if you want to do a desktop version if you're doing a lot of role playing. So, this is pretty. The things you have to remember is where you're putting it. So if you're going to put a background on a map, you want to put it as map and background. So if you put it as an object and token, then when you start trying to move your tokens, um, you get pretty screwed. So here in the game that I'm doing right now for the videos, All this map was in the background, and then all these tokens were on top with the tokens. That way the map doesn't move. Okay? And that's all I have, have about it. Uh, I can't think of anything else. If you have any questions or something else that you're having problems with, just let me know. And um, we'll work it out together, because I don't know everything about Roll20. Surely not expert. There's other people that are way smarter. I just do it as a uh, extra benefit or extra extra visual for my games because I'm a visual person. Um, thank you. Have a good day.